okay? And we are looking at CultureGram's online database, the World Edition. And our objectives for this session are to just help you to be able to articulate how infographics that you find in the World Edition of CultureGram's can increase information literacy. Also, I want to introduce you to the features and tools in CultureGrams, including concepts and terminology. We're going to look at the statistical graphs and tables, and I also want to cover teaching activities, which are a collection of standards-based activities that you can use to make sure that students are becoming proficient at their uh, state and national uh, performance standards. So what is CultureGrams? CultureGrams is simply a framework that helps you to understand how other cultures live. It's the set of traditions and beliefs and customs that define a culture and make the, the world's people what they are. Um, so this product has about 250 countries that are covered, and we have three editions of the product, the World Edition, the Kids Edition, and the States and Provinces edition, and we're looking at just the world edition. So CultureGrams is a leading reference for concise, reliable cultural information. It's meant to educate students about the world around them and to also help college students and business people to stay up to date with the latest information on customs and traditions from, from these countries. And we provide more than just a mere report. These reports are prepared by in-country editors. There's a very strict review process. Uh, we select or we identify a writer in each country. We provide them with a template of the information we want to provide in each report. And they provide us a rough draft. We send it back to that country and that that writer or editor must get someone from the Tourism Bureau as well as a scholarly peer to review the information for accuracy. So we go through that back and forth process to make sure that you're getting the most current, up-to-date, and accurate information. These reports are updated uh, regularly, about every quarter, and they are totally rewritten every five years. So that's a little bit on the background of CultureGrams and how they're put together. CultureGrams was recently identified as one of the must-have databases by School Library Journal. And this is just a, a screenshot of the article from back in October of last year. So uh, a very diverse uh, product that uh, fits into many areas of your middle school and high school curriculum. So hopefully I can point some of those things out to you as we move through our presentation. So remember, the World Edition is just one uh, edition of what's available to you. The entire subscription includes a, a version that is more appropriate for uh, lower level, so or elementary and middle school students. So in the World Edition, we're going to explore the cultural information. And again, we're going to look at these reports that define customs and courtesies, lifestyle, society, and a number of other uh, content areas. One of the things I'll be sure to point out will be the infographics, and these are based upon statistical averages from each country, and they measure things like family size and language, income level, religion, and a wealth of other content areas. So there are infographics for every country in the Kids Edition and in the World Edition. And again, this is just meant to give you a snapshot of uh, life in the country with uh, with statistics. You can also use this product to build graphs and tables. So this may be something that's applicable to math curriculums, to economics classes, maybe even to, to world history classes and uh, literacy classes, in English language arts. So there's lots of places that you can apply a, a graph and table, but it allows you to select countries from uh, one continent or from anywhere around the world. You may select uh, Spanish-speaking countries or, or um, German-speaking countries and do these types of comparisons to see what life is like on a day-to-day -day basis. There's an extensive uh, visual literacy tool, photos as well as videos are included in the World Edition of CultureGrams. In the photo gallery, you're able to select uh, the countries 
from an alphabetical listing, and you'll be presented with approximately 30 to 50 photographs from each country. Your users have rights to use all of this content in their written and oral reports, so just kind of keep those in mind. So not only a photo gallery, but a video gallery that depicts uh, popular activities, tourist attractions, landmarks in these countries, and just another way to help immerse yourself in the place and help students to learn uh, what it's like to live in the country and make comparisons from one country to another. And we're going to wrap up by looking at the teaching activities. So there's an extensive collection of teaching activities that are available in Culturegrams, and we're going to certainly spend a little time there to help you become more familiar with that content. And anytime you need support, you can go to our support center and open a case or view articles about um, any ProQuest product. We also have an extensive collection of LibGuides, and I'll, I'll point you to the LibGuide as we wrap up. And anytime you have a question about training, just send an inquiry to training at ProQuest.com. And I'm toggling it over to my browser. We're going to begin to explore the Culturegrams database in the live environment. Okay, and hopefully I haven't timed out here, but uh, this is the landing page, and I hope that you can see that. And here are your launch points for the World Edition, Kids Edition, States Edition, and the Canadian Provinces Edition. Anything that's new with these products will be highlighted on the front page here. So we see that there's some new videos. Um, here's one for a traditional musician's uh, performance in Ethiopia, children gathering water, a wedding procession, and, and so on. But keep in mind we're looking at just this version, which is the adult version, and written at an approximately ninth grade level. There's three ways to search for the information. There's a big search box in the top right corner that allows you to enter the the country that you're researching, or any search term. It doesn't have to be a country name. It can be a keyword, anything like soccer, baseball, anything that a young person may be interested in, and you can discover those keywords within these text-based reports. There's a drop-down menu in the left sidebar that allows us to select a region and also to select a country from the drop-down menu here or we can use the interactive map in the center of the page that allows us to just select a country or a continent and then a country, and at the lower portion of the screen, we can open up the menu by continent. We still see the interactive map. We select the country that we're interested in, and since I've selected Asia, notice that there is an overview of each uh, region or each continent. It talks about the, cli the climate, uh, the land, and uh, just all of the features that, that make this a unique continent. It also talks about things like uh, active volcanoes and earthquakes, and just gives you a real feel for, for um, the climate and the geography and landscape of the country. So I've expanded the the overview to show you the complete overview. We saw the brief overview on the page there and choose read more to, to see the entire page. So I'm going to navigate back to another country. I'll just click on my ProQuest Culturegrams logo back into the World Edition and let's explore a country that's been in the news a good bit lately. So Sudan. So beginning with uh, home World Edition, I went to Africa and Sudan, and this is the layout of each one of the country reports. In the center of the page, we have the Did You Know section that has little known and interesting facts that are provided by the in-country editor. So this is meant to give us unique content that we don't find in an encyclopedia or in a textbook. So this talks about the heart of Africa, borders seven different countries, and uh, it tells you how to say yes and so on. It talks about weather and things like that. And here's the infographic that gives you a snapshot of the average person in this country. I can enlarge this infographic. I can print this infographic, and that's what I'm choosing to do. I'll just enlarge it so that we can take a better look at the information that's included here. So uh, for information literacy purposes, this is giving you the, the uh, 
average Sudanese person and statistics about that person. So the person has a gross buying power of about $4,300, median age of 19 years, and about three years of schooling, a life expectancy of 63 years, and the average Sudanese has three siblings. And if you can look to the far right corner of the page, we'll see the world comparison. So we can quickly see, you know, and make make comparisons and and about one country to another or one country as compared to the rest of the world's population. So for the rest of the world, the average buying power is about $15,000 per year. The average age of the world's citizens is 30 years of age, eight years of schooling with a life expectancy of 71 years and also one sibling. We can scroll to the bottom of the page to get even more information on the residents of Sudan. It shows us, first of all, where it's located on the map and within uh, the continent of Africa. It talks about the fact that 66% of the, uh, the uh, population in Sudan live in a rural area, and they speak uh, the ethnicity is Sudanese, of course, and then their language is uh, Arabic, and the religion that is most often practiced would be um, Muslim. So that's the the infographic. We'll find these for each country, and I'm stepping back to the product, and that's located in the center of the page for each one of the country reports. As I move further down the page, I'm finding additional tools such as the official name of this uh, country. So this is an MP3 file where I can actually uh, listen to the name of the country pronounced, and I can also listen to the national anthem for the country. I can download that as an MP3 file and to the bottom of the page, there's information on the flag, such as what the colors and emblems may mean, so a, a, a description of the flag, information on when it was adopted, and um, the ability to go to the flag gallery, where we can see flags for all of the 250 countries that are represented in culturegrams, and we can quickly launch out to the full text reports. And I'm just pausing for a moment to see if there are any questions so far. Feel free to chime in in the chat if you have any questions. Okay, if there are no questions, we're going to move on to the country data. So at the lower portion of the screen, we're finding uh, the capital of the country, the current time, latitude, uh, the location of the country by latitude and longitude, population information. And notice that these are all hyperlinks that will bring me to to the charts where I can look at population information for every country. I can look at the size of every country in square miles and square kilometers by following these links to the charts for area. I can look at the Human Development Index, which is a number that measures the quality of life in these countries. And that's uh, determined by things like literacy rates, uh, uh, birth rates and infant mortality rates. So it's a wealth of content that goes into determining these uh, human development indices. And this is one of the things that is covered in the concepts and terminology. So if you're working with students who, who may uh, you know, stumble upon this term and not know what it means or how to interpret it or how to use that data, there's certainly a definition under uh, concepts and terminology to help your students better understand terms that they find in culture grounds. Also, gender inequality, adult literacy rates, infant mortality, life expectancy, and the form of currency that is most often used in the country. Uh, I'll come back and visit these, but I want to show you the content in the left sidebar as well. So in the World Edition, we covered 25 different categories for each country. Those categories are, are divided into broad topics like uh, background, people, customs and courtesies is the third category we see there, lifestyle, society, and at a glance. So under each one of these uh, subtopics, you'll find uh, a thoroughly written paragraph that's 
again, prepared by the in-country editor. We can also look at any of the statistics that uh, correlate to that section. So for population, we can look at the population of each country, and then, or we can look at the population of this country, and then link out to the, the, the grid for population information on every country. Urban population, population growth, and so on. And I can go to the next section. I'm discovering terms along the way. So this is talking about the official language, Arabic, and I can link out to a definition for that term. Religion is the next section there. So we're seeing two paragraphs talking about religion. But I'm going to jump down the page to something like family. So this talks about the family structure, uh, the role of parents and children, and other roles that are defined by gender within this country. I can go on to the next section, or I can choose a topic from the left sidebar. Life cycle looks at birth, milestones throughout the life, and also death, uh, observances that are celebrated at uh, each of these occasions. And finally, at the very bottom of the page, we can see things like transportation and communication, education, and so on. So this is a great topic to, to explore some of the charts. Under transportation and communication, I can look at the number of Internet users by country. So if I open up that menu, it shows me my chart for Internet users per 100 people in the country and also cell phone subscribers per 100 people. And this is alphabetically arranged. And I can also print this report out if I need to. I can print it out as a... Uh, plain text or, or Excel, XLS, that is, and I can also print it out as a, a CSV file. So uh, just scrolling all the way to the bottom, trying to find the country that we're looking at within this grid. So we're looking at Sudan, and it's there showing that about 28% of the population has Internet access and about 71% of the population has cell phone or, or cell phone subscribers. So remember, 25 categories that you can quickly access from the left sidebar. There's also the ability to translate each one of the country reports into, uh, I think that's about 11 different languages, and also you can convert the text to speech or have the article or the, the uh, section read to you, and you can also choose to download the the uh, audio file. Then we also have the ability to uh, cite this this uh, report, this country report, in APA or MLA citation formats. Just select your citation format, uh, generate your citation, and copy and paste it to um, a working document or, or reporting document. So I'm going to clear my screen, and I'm going to come back and do a search just going back into the World Edition, and this time I'll just do a quick search on just showing you another way to get to the content. So I've selected Indonesia as my search term, and here I'm getting a results list that shows there's 38 results for Indonesia. I want the one from the World Edition, so we see the layout is the same. When there is a corresponding KISS report, you can quickly launch to it from an option at the top of the uh, right sidebar there. So you will not find a corresponding kids edition for every report, but uh, I think about probably about 75% of the ones in the world edition are also available in the kids edition. In the kids edition, we look for the countries that we know are most studied in elementary and middle school geography and social studies classes. Other things that you can do on this page, you can save any document to your Google Drive account, and you can also add to Google Classroom. You just have to link your account. Notice at the top where my cursor is moving, uh, that's a way to link and unlink your Google Classroom or Google Drive account to CultureGram. So you can save directly to those accounts. Then we can print the, the reports. We can print the full text. We can also email the report. These are all already features I've talked about briefly, the multimedia features, photographs, 
videos, slideshows. There's even some interviews with the world's people or citizens from each country. You'll find interviews with young people uh, and elderly people asking about their religious affiliations and their uh, their their beliefs and their home life and school life. So just another way to get a, a deeper feel for the people in the country. Famous People section gives us very brief biographies of at least five people from every country, from different occupations and, and lifestyles. So that's the Famous People section. And you also find recipes for every country. But what we want to look at for the last few minutes here be the graphs and tables, the definitions, and the teaching activities. From the graphs and tables link, I can choose to look at the areas that are available for comparison. So all of these areas I can choose to, to make some type of uh, uh, comparison graph or comparison chart. And it is an extensive list there. Now we do have some pre-formatted uh, tables. So if I wanted to just look at information on women, since this is uh, Women's History Month, uh, I can pull up uh, information on, on country data on women, and here's my report options to download this as a printable report or as a CSV file. But if I want to just go and create my own comparison table, and that gives me the option to select my countries. Notice the instructions here that you need to hold down your control key, select your countries. And I'm just going to do this really quickly and randomly. So I'm holding down my control key. I'll select about six countries there and areas that I want to compare. So head of government there. I'll scroll down. I'll look at the number of Internet users and male literacy rates. And this only allows me to select, I think, four categories. And immunizations have been in the news a lot. So let's select that. And we can choose to create our comparison table. Very quickly, I've come back with a table that I can print or download as a CSV file. I can also sort each of the columns. So if I need to sort this from uh, A to Z or Z to A, I can also sort the head of government column, the Internet users from low to high and high to low. So just use these options or these arrows next to the uh, category title to resort that information if you need to. And then it gives us the source information for all of these uh, categories. Sometimes uh, we do use additional sources outside of what is provided by the in-country editor. So things like the World Bank, the World Factbook from 2016, are sources for culture grabs as well. And I just want to step back. Um, so actually, I've done that comparison table. Let's go to another country very quickly. We'll go to Russia. And this time, we'll say that we want to do a comparison chart. So I'm just scrolling down, selecting gra graphs and tables. But um, that was a table, actually. So I want to do a, a graph. So up to 10 nations and four categories. And for time's sake, I'm just selecting a few countries there and a few areas that I want to compare, and I can generate my comparison graph. So this certainly is something that you might use in your math curriculums or, or uh, economics. I'm sure you can find a number of subject areas where this can be applied. Okay, so back to home, still in the world edition, and we'll just go to one more country. Um, we'll go down to Spain this time. So I'm selecting Spain, and we're going to look at the definitions. So we looked at the graphs and tables, and we briefly saw how to create those with the instructions at the top of the page. Under definitions, we get concepts and terminology along with other cultural terms that the students will be exposed to in this product. So looking at uh, concepts and terminology, you'll see that these are referred to many times throughout the, the full text report. So things like cash crop and communism, diversified economy. And I want to look for the one that we uh, were using earlier, Human Development Index. So uh, there's a very thorough uh, description there talking about how 
this term is used and, and what it means within the body of, of these full text reports that are available. So just know that you can come back and get all of these definitions that may be just something else that you can incorporate into a, a classroom lesson. And then there are cultural terms. We can browse these by country. Basically, they tell us, you know, how to say hello, good morning, good afternoon, uh, basic terms in in each country, and let's just randomly go to the letter M there, and we, we see the terms, and we can search by term or we can search by country. So a great tool that you might also be able to introduce to foreign language classes. And the last place that we're going to go is to the teaching activities. The teaching activities are accessible from every page, no matter where you land in the product. If you go to teaching activities at the bottom of the page and open up that PDF, this is your collection of activities that you can use to make sure that students are becoming proficient at their uh, state and national standards. And here, I can even search within this document. So I'm going to do a quick search there. So this is document is about 213 pages in length. I can search for activities that uh, mention economics. So quickly, I got to, well, that didn't give me any results, Atlas, so I'm going to try another search term. But notice how uh, we're able to find a search term, and this is uh, one of the uh, lower level activities, but I want to find something at the upper school level. So I know that they're located at the bottom of this document, so I'm just going to scroll down to show an activity, walk you through that as we, as we wrap up. So using my page down button, uh, there's a great one on film festival, and this is a research and presentation activity. Uh, the objective is that students will classify and contextualize cultural video clips, and this is related to the Common Core Standard for English uh, for Reading, that is, and Literacy, and it gives you the specific standard uh, reading literacy, ninth grade, tenth month, I think that is what it applies to, and other standards. So there's the Anchor Reading Standard. And uh, that's actually correlated to lots of different standards there, but you can see the ones that are applicable. And then we can actually see other correlations, standard one for visual arts and for national social studies standards and the area of culture. This is standard C at the high school level. Then we get instructions along with time requirements, the materials that are needed. The only thing that you'll ever need for an activity is access to these full text reports. And remember, students can email these, they can print them, lots of ways to get hard copies. They can even save them to their Google Drive accounts. There are instructions for, for completing the activity in the classroom. And then there's always an extension activity. Well, I say that and then there's not one for that particular uh, activity. But in most cases, there will be some type of extension activity. At least at the elementary and middle school, I always find those. Find those. So just keep in mind that uh, you know you can find something to to take the study a little further. There are the instructions for the educator. It tells them that they would use the interviews from the World Edition to to support this particular activity, and I'm still looking to see if there's an extension activity. Yes, here's an extension activity on this particular uh, this particular teaching activity. Okay, so look for those, and I'm just going to scroll back to the top of this page to show you the categories, and we're going to wrap up with the library guide. So, activity types. There's an index to the activities, and notice that we have creative projects, discussion projects, games, problem solving, presentation, and research uh, focus projects. Okay, and 
The very last place that we're going would be to the library guide. If there are no questions or if there are questions, please feel free to enter those in the chat. And our library guides are housed at proquest.libguides.com, proquest.libguides.com. If you come down and select K-12 and student resources, you find our, our library guide for culture grams. And this is just help uh, or something that you can share with others at your institution to teach them about the product and to show that you have a subscription to this product. There's a section uh, about the product. There's a section on supplemental content, using culture grounds in the classroom, access to our blog, and our new product education tab that will allow you to grab presentations for your own learning and for instruction at your institution. <laughs> 